once night has fallen over Amman, somewhere on a street of the Jordanian capital, a Syrian refugee sets up a stand. From afar, she seems to be selling vegetables. But one of our contacts tells us that this is a front. In reality, she is covertly engaging in a very different type of trade. We film our conversation with a hidden camera. She implies that she can provide services which involve some of her female compatriots. She offers to meet us again later. As planned, we see her again the next day. After we tell her that we are journalists, she agrees to go into detail about the true nature of her business, but only in a discreet setting. She calls herself Umm Mahmoud. This refugee knows a lot of Syrian girls whose families are in dire straits. Umm Mahmoud is a marriage broker. <laughs> Um Mahmoud connects these men with Syrian families who she says are only interested in one thing. These marriages rarely have any legal value, and the grooms are often only interested in sex. How old is he? Um Mahmoud says that the man will have to pay a dowry of some 10,000 euros to the family. She is not willing to share with us what her commission is once her work is done. The marriage business has been booming ever since Syrians arrived in droves in Jordan. 600,000 of them at this point, according to the High Commission for Refugees. Three quarters of them are women and children, many of them young girls who are very vulnerable. At the Zatari camp, the international community takes care of basic needs, but can do little about people's sense of insecurity. In order to protect family honor, some parents choose to marry their daughters, often at a very young age. Many of the refugees come from a conservative background and see nothing wrong with this custom. In the main street of the camp, residents can buy almost anything. Basic goods, but also more sophisticated products, such as wedding dresses. Different models are for rent at this improvised shop. The owner tells us that she has done well since she opened her shop over a year ago. Aid organizations are increasingly worried by instances of early marriage, abuse, and other types of violence against female refugees. Some of them now focus entirely on these issues. This center is just a few kilometers away from the camp. Women are told they can talk openly here. Those who are too afraid to come can call. This phone call offers a rare insight into the suffering of thousands of female Syrian refugees in Jordan. These women have left their war-torn country only for violence to catch up with them again. The caller at the other end of the line was married to a foreigner after she left Syria. He beats her. 
The phone line is her only connection to the outside world. At home, she is locked up. <laughs> Uma Ashraf heads this center. She gives refugees social and psychological help. The NGO she works for states that it is the very first one in Jordan to cater to the specific needs of these women. Some of those who have been exploited, abused or abandoned end up at this lawyer's office. They want to sue or get divorced, but they have very few rights in their new country. Imad Sharkawi describes himself as a human rights activist who helps victims of human trafficking for free. He shows us how well-organized networks go about recruiting Syrian women by posting job offers that target them online. These Syrian women can easily be found on the internet. Women who have been tricked or are after easy money often end up in nightclubs like these. Customers are locals or foreigners. We film with a hidden camera. Tell me, where are you from? Really? From Syria? For some, like this refugee girl, it's a way to make a living, dancing invitingly in front of male customers and encouraging them to drink heavily. She says that she came to Jordan alone and that her family stayed behind. Several NGOs are fighting to end the commercial exploitation of Syrian women but they don't all agree on how to go about it. The Islamist organization Al-Kitab wal Sunnah provides refugees with food and services. Officially, it does not arrange weddings between Syrian women and foreigners. Instead, it organizes educational seminars. Many of those present at this workshop are widows who are married to fighters or political prisoners. The speaker is a professor of Islamic law. He knows that these mothers are often approached by men who are interested in their daughters. The professor is giving a lecture on the legal aspects of marrying a girl before she reaches adulthood. He has his own interpretation of the law. According to the speaker, a girl simply needs to be physically and psychologically ready. He uses members of the small crowd to make his point. Yeah. 
يعني كان للاب والاخ وكل شيء يعني اذا يعني بتحسي انه كان رغم رغم المساوئ كان في نوع من النجاح بحياتك آه الزوجيه نتيجه نضج الرجل الحمد لله انه ممكن اذا يعني احنا ممكن نقول انه قد يكون الزواج المبكر ناجح But these two Jordanian social workers argue that this is a form of violence against women. Their goal is to protect the girls in the Syrian households that they visit. In order to do so, they have to present themselves in a positive light to the men who often perceive them as a threat to their authority. يعني فعلا كان حالة عنف زي هيك توجهنا على اساس انه زيادة عادية احنا كنا مسكين مع الست انه احنا طالعين بس انه الزوج مش عارف انه احنا جايين نتابع هذا الموضوع This young man's wife was killed in Syria He now lives with his mother and his children For him and many of his male compatriots the order of things has been turned upside down جينا هون اختلف الموضوع عرفت كيف؟ يعني بسوريا ما كان يعني المرأة ما لها حقوق عرفت كيف؟ هيك القانون عندنا فهلا هون يعني صارت المرأة بتطلع مثلا بتطلع على المراكز مثلا تتثقف The social workers want to change the way young Syrian men and women relate to each other كل حدا بده يمسك الخيط بده يعرف عن حاله بحب الرسم بدرس بروفايدا أنا اسمي عمر الزايد أنا انولدت في سوريا في درعة في مدينة سوريا. It's now up to those girls who have been victims of violence to talk about themselves. Sham, 16 years old, was almost married off two years ago. حق الأول إنه أدرس. حق الثاني إنه عيش طفولتي أو عيش حياتي. وحق الثالث إنه أنا ناقش. ودائما لازم الرأي يكون غالبني وحق انه انا بقدر اني انا اقول لا مو دائما بدي امشي على رأي غيري هلا احنا شام يعني بجوز الوضع مختلف لانه كنا نشتغل عليها وعلى الاهل يعني ما كانش الموضوع مفصول مكنا شام من مهارات الحوار وكيف تفاوض وفي نفس الوقت كانت في جلسات توعوية ام شام كانت بتشارك فيها بيجي بتوقع 98% حتى المثقفين ما بيع يعني ما في نسبة إنه نعرف ما في حقوق مرأة. Syrian female refugees who are victims of gender-based violence rarely speak out, which is why international organizations are unable to provide precise figures about the problem. However, they are adamant that it concerns the vast majority of them. This problem existed long before the war broke out, but it is becoming increasingly worse as the conflict drags on.